time. So here we go. We're gonna jump into the next set. We got Skies that making a return as well as Kojam, but on the loser side of top six in the, is it, is the, the that, that the, kind of ignore that. Basically, the winner of this is gonna be moving on th into pools on the loser side. I am pretty sure. Yeah, because it's loser's quarterfinals. The winner of that is gonna move on into the top 32. So there's a lot of lot a lot of stake essentially here. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Zelda the trainer, I feel, is another one of those. Odd matchups that we, we see decent enough in Tri-State. We have plenty of trainer players. We have a few Zeldas under the hood. But like, the matchup itself is so odd because it's this weird counter zoning measure where there's so many things that could keep people at bay, but it's just your normals that matter the most. Yeah, and speaking of normal, Skies is just going for the back air out of shield, connects the toe, gets the kill against Kojam, and that's that's all literally all you need to do. It's a very strong out of shield option for Zelda that Kojam is gonna have to respect. So Kojam again coming here with Pokemon Trainer. Ready up that Phantom Knight just to give himself some breathing room again. You'll see Zelda's do that a lot off stage just to try to get back to the stage safe and sound. You know, when you, got, when you get your uh, big brother, your teammate coming out onto the stage, you give yourself some uh, some space. It doesn't matter. Skojam is going to still find a way to push you off. Yeah, but he's not going to be able to take the stock just yet. Another really smart recovery and even turning the counter play into a stock of his own. He flipped the table on him. That's what he did. I don't, I don't think Kojam was ready for any of this. Thanks, guys. I came in way too hot for this one. There we go. Sets him up with a neutral air, popping him up into the air ever so slightly, trying to get the combo. But nice call out anti air. Kojam jumping up there, recognizing exactly where Skies is going to go mid air. Catches the up air, explodes. And that's going to be that first, first stock going for him. But it might be too late, man. He's, it's two stocks to one, so I, I don't know where this is going to lead. Dashing around. I actually really like the way Kojam is handling the situation. Just staying grounded, not committing to anything too hard is the best way for him to try and bring this back. He can't afford to go for trades, really, and if he gives up too much space, then that's the space that Zelda needs. And we've seen what Skyza can do with just a little bit of space. Imagine what he has with total stage control. And it could be a huge turnaround. And honestly, these toes, okay, not enough percent for to actually go for the confirm up. Yeah, Shield's a really good, you know, really good option when they're at a certain percent window. It's a pretty large window, too, but not that low. So here we go, 92% on Skyza. Trying to find her way into this victory screen. Just one more hit. Push him off stage. Nice punish from Kojam. Just runs right on top of him, clamping that up air. And again, you know, you see this a lot from Pokemon Trainer. Just trying to close the distance between him and Zelda hardcore. Good evasion. You saw Phantom Knight coming in, so he had to like jump around. Trying, did you see that grab range? Yeah, uh, looking like Palutena, honestly. Charizard with the longest of necks getting snatched right now. Yo, everyone's like, yo, Palu's the next. Oh! Hello? Goodbye. Life comes at you fast. Well, you know what? You, know, you, you got the cab, and you're, you're already going home. Out the gate, Skyza jumps right off stage, sends him into a precarious position, goes for the neutral B, the Nehru's love, and sends him like it. That was such a weird angle. I've never seen that have so much knockback afterwards. <laughs> and he got stage spikes by Nehru's love. Who knew? Oh, this was the hottest of plays. Look at that. Caught by the Knight. The downer to set up into the back air. Helper, can we watch that one more time? Because I want to dissect this, right? So he sent him off stage, oh, right? I just want to see it he again. starts the Phantom Knight, sends him into the ledge to give him some breathing room. So it forces Kojam to keep his distance from the shield. So he easily jumps above him, gets the downer, connects the toe right afterward. Just a really solid play. This guy's, again, just flipping the tables on him. He's the one in disadvantage. But because of the shield pressure from Phantom Knight, gave him so much time to connect that downer. Smart stuff. He's going to jump into this next game. This guy's is up one to zero. Game two taking us to Battlefield, and I'm not... Honestly, I don't think this is the best of stages for uh, Kojam to bring us to. I'm actually really curious about how this was decided against, just because I feel like Zelda's tools are able to control space really well. Now, mind you, I feel like Ivysaur flourishes on this stage. But and that's exactly why. We haven't seen a lot of the Ivysaur get a chance to come out and play. It's mostly been Squirrel and Charizard getting tossed while Kojam's trying to stay alive because Ivysaur doesn't have enough stage presence. Okay, speaking of stage presence, Kojam starting to control bit by bit. There we go, big punish. I think Skyzo was trying to get that on a platform so he didn't have all that cooldown right afterwards. But not, not the biggest punish from Kojam, but he's maintaining some more stage control, has him off stage. Didn't want to try to go for the punish right afterwards, wants to you know, stay on the corner instead and just try to like maintain that presence and punish the ledge get option right afterwards. 
And Zelda looking for that down tilt that set him up very nicely. Pops him uh, put it into the air. Try to get punished afterwards. Punishing the grab on the edge of the stage. He knew that Kojam wanted the grab on the edge because if he connects it, leads into a down throw vine whip. So Skyza being hyper aware, jumps above the grab and gets the toe right afterwards. Yo, Skyza's DI has been phenomenal. This is the second time now in this set alone where we've seen him survive from the very edge of the blast zone. But oh, smash. Not so, not so bad that. As a shield. Great pickup option. And honestly, that covers a lot of options. Not only does it cover like just letting go a shield, but it covers jump at a shield because it's a great anti-air for Charizard. There we go. Skyza wanted the grab after that down tilt, but I don't know if he wanted to input the dash afterwards or if he thought Kojan was closer, but ended up whipping the grab instead. And because of that, has himself on the ledge against Ivysaur, who really wants that down air. Okay, he knew he was going to roll onto the stage and had the reaction, but just a, didn't get there in time, misspaced it a bit. But still has a lot of control, keeping Skyza airborne. And speaking of airborne, we're going to the moon off of, off of that toe. My word, he's so consistent with getting these. Even across the different sizes of the characters in Trainer, he's so confident with his setups leading into the sweet spot, forward airs and back airs. Like, honestly, the Zelda play is out of this world from Skyza in this set. Off stage. Yeah, Sky's at 105%. Kojam looking for this big punish. Because he needs a power play right now if he wants to try to bring this back again. It's still best two of three. Okay, the Phantom Knight? Yo, the blocks? I mean, he's got a shield for a reason. Actually blocking Zelda? Damn, imagine there using it is. shields. Crazy. Look at that power pose afterwards, too. You saw him go for the up B out of shield. And the second he comes out of Feora's win, you know, she is just, she's got her hands up like a ballerina. Like, she knows exactly what she did. She's smirking, too. Look at this smirk. Watch this smirk. Oh, she's sassy about she it. She is sassafras out here. Let him know. There we go. And, you know, Kojam put it, you know, smiling after that. You know, recognized that was a pretty good set. Kojam going down with a 33rd place finish at, uh, you know, here at Smash Delphi. But, again, that's a C-tier tournament getting 33rd. Indeed, indeed. That might give you a couple points here or there, you know. I, I don't, it's probably not enough to get you on PGR Top 100, mm, obviously. No, but, but it's a good start. You put in the